Now the topic is probability mass function and probability density function. For both the function, whether it is a probability mass function and probability density function, the notation is given by small f. So this is small f. In the subscript, this is capital X or capital Y, where this capital X represents the random variable. So this is the random variable and within bracket it is small x that is this small x it is the value that this random variable can take. So that means the probability mass function it is represented by small f within subscript we have capital X and within bracket this is the small x. So this small x it is the value that this capital X that is the random variable can take and the for, for the probability density function the same notation is used. Now, in some books, this fx of x, it can also be represented as simply f of x, okay? So, that means we can use this small f of x or fx of x. Now, when to use this probability mass function? If x is a discrete random variable, so the function given by this, that is small f of x, this is a probability mass function. If x is a continuous random variable, then f of x, this is a probability density function. Now, since x is a discrete random variable, so we use for the discrete random variable, we always use summation. For a continuous random variable, we always use integration. Now, what does this fx stands for? fx defines the probability at x is equals to x that is probability at a point so fx it is equals to probability at x is equals to x and for a continuous case what is this fx fx in the case of a continuous random variable we cannot say probability at a specific point that is probability at a specific point for the case of a continuous random variable this is always equals to zero so for the case of a continuous random variable this f of x denotes that probability minus infinity is less than x to infinity so this is the probability in the case of a continuous random variable and in the case of a discrete random variable this fx it is the probability at a specific point that is probability x is equals to x now what is the necessary and sufficient condition for a function to be a probability mass function since it is a probability mass function so here x is a discrete random variable if x is a discrete random variable then probability mass function it is given by fx of x or simply f of x now fx of x for a probability mass function it is nothing but probability at x is equals to x so for a function to be a probability mass function we have two conditions since fx of x it defines the probability and we know that probabilities are always greater than equals to zero so the first condition is that that fx of x it is always greater than equals to zero for all x belongs to whatever we have the values of x and the second condition the summation of all the probabilities that is fx of x it is nothing but probabilities so summation of all the probabilities that is fx of x since x is discrete so we use summation okay so that means summation of fx of x over all the possible values of x this is equals to 1 so that means these are the two conditions for a function to be a probability mass function in case of a discrete random variable now for the case of a discrete random variable suppose we have an example of tossing two coins so here we have the experiment of tossing two coins so the sample space of tossing two coins this is given by that is all the possible outcomes which is head 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 tail tail head and tail tail now if x denotes the number of head where x is a random variable and x is denoting the number of heads now so what is the probability function that means x can take values 
x can take values because number of head in case of tossing two coins it could be 0 it could be 1 or it could be 2 so x is taking three values 0 1 and 2 so here we have x it is taking value 0 1 and 2 it is 0 because the over the four possible outcomes are head 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 tail tail head and tail tail so it is 0 when we no head turns out so that means what is the probability of getting zero number of head fx of x or we simply write it as probability x is equals to x so what does it mean that is at zero that is fx at zero or probability x is equals to zero so this means that probability of getting zero number of heads so zero number of head that is we have only one case where zero number of head turns out so in that case this is 1 and the total outcomes this is 4 so the probability of getting 0 number of head this is 1 by 4 then what is the probability of getting 1 number of head this is nothing but this is the case or this is the case whether head tail or the tail head so this is coming out to be 2 by 4 and probability of getting 2 number of heads it is again 1 by 4 now if you look at this probability so basically the collection of all pairs of x size comma fx i's so the collection of all pairs here we have all the possible values of x for the experiment of tossing two coins and their associated probabilities corresponding to each x size for x is equals to 0 that is 0 number of head it is 1 by 4 for x is equals to 1 it is 2 by 4 and for x is equals to 2 it is 1 by 4 so that means the collection of all pairs x size comma f of x i where x size all the possible values of the random variable and f of x size these are the probabilities associated with each x size so all the collection this is a probability distribution in the case of a discrete random variable so this is a probability distribution and this fx of x it is a probability mass function now to check whether it is a valid probability mass function or not the first condition if you look at the first condition that is the first condition is the fx of x this must be greater than 0 that is all the probabilities must be greater than equals to 0 and summation of all the probabilities must be equals to 1. Now to check for this whether it is a valid probability function since all the probabilities it is greater than equals to 0 and the second condition when you add all these probabilities this is 1 by 4 plus 2 by 4 plus 1 by 4 that is 1 by 4 plus 2 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is coming out to be 1 so that means the summation of fx of x this is equals to 1 and we have the probabilities all the probabilities this is greater than equals to 0 for all x which is equals to 0 1 and 2 and also summation over x x is going from 0 to 2 fx of x this is equals to 1 and hence it is a valid probability mass function since the two conditions are satisfied now in the case of a continuous random variable the necessary and sufficient condition for a function to be a probability density function density because it is a continuous case so if x is a continuous random variable we use the function to be a probability density function now in case of a probability continuous random variable the probability density function that is the probability at a specific point in case of a continuous random variable it is equals to zero that means we say that for the continuous case probability at a point it is always equals to zero and how we compute the probabilities here what are the two conditions since it is a continuous case we use integration instead of summation in case of discrete we use summation for the case of a discrete random variable for the case of a continuous random variable we always use integration now for a function to be a 
valid probability density function the first condition is that fx of x this must be greater than equals to 0 for all x belongs to real number because here x is defined in an interval so for all x belongs to real number this probability must be greater than equals to 0 and the second condition because we will use integration instead of summation so integral from minus infinity to infinity fx of x this must be equals to 1. So this is the second condition and we have to integrate with respect to x. So this integral must be equals to 1. And in this case how we define the probability if we are saying probability within the interval a to b. Whenever x is in between a to b, so this is given by the limits of this integration. It is from the lower limit is a, upper limit is b and we have to integrate probability is the probability density function. Integrate within the limits a to b that is dx. So that means in this way we define the probabilities for the case of a continuous random variable and for a necessary and sufficient condition for a probability density function these two conditions must be satisfied. The first condition is fx of x this must be greater than equals to 0 for all x belongs to real number and the second condition is an integral minus infinity to infinity fx of x dx it is equals to 1. In case of a continuous random variable we always define the probabilities within an interval that is here a and b both belongs to the real number. So the probability is given by integral a to b fx of x but for the case of a continuous random variable the probability at a specific point that is probability at x is equals to xi where xi is some specific point this is always equals to 0. We define the probabilities in an interval for the continuous case.